Good morning. Today's Bible study comes from John chapter 6, verses 60 through 71, and this ends the chapter um, of John chapter 6. And it reads as follows. On hearing it, many of the disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know what you are, the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, have I not chosen you, the twelve, yet one of you is a devil? He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. So, this time right now is when the disciples started leaving Jesus, and there were more than the twelve disciples, just to let you know, and you can read that throughout the gospel. There were many disciples. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, and you notice it says many, this is hard teaching. And he's talking about the bread of life. When Jesus was talking about this a little bit earlier in the chapter, Jesus is telling them about the bread of life, and he is the bread of life, and what his blood means, and what the bread means, and he breaks it down from being just what man would think physically to the spiritual part. And they're having a hard time with this teaching. Um, it's new. It's something they hadn't heard, something they've been seeing. And they say, this is hard teaching. Who can accept it? And Jesus kind of answered it earlier when he told you who could accept it. But they asked, and Jesus was aware that his disciples had a problem with this. And it tells you that in 61. He's aware that his disciples are grumbling about this. So Jesus said, he asked him a question. Does this offend you? And with this, Jesus knew that this probably offended a lot of the disciples that were listening to him. And his teaching probably offended them. But that didn't mean the word changed. That didn't mean Jesus was going to say, oh, well, if it offends you, I'm going to change the right way to do it your way. And I like to say, it's either Yahweh or your way. And Jesus was going Yahweh. So Jesus didn't change, change it. And the thing that really stands out here, and I love this part, is Jesus never preached to please the crowd. Jesus preached what needed to be said. And so he didn't take this back, but he did ask him. And it was, it was hard for them, but Jesus wasn't changing. So what then if you would see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? He asked him. What if you saw me go back up into heaven? Because if this all offended you, how are you going to see me when I'm in glory? How are you going to answer me when it comes judgment time? And pretty much, be mad now, be bothered, be offended right now, but... Get it done with and believe before it's too late. So it is a spirit, he goes, it is a spirit who gives life. 
the flesh profits nothing. Woo! In my mind, in my mind, all I can hear Jesus saying is, concentrate on your spirit. This flesh is perishable. The spirit is imperishable. And the spirit will give you life. The flesh is going to die. Stop thinking of the physical part of eating and think of the spiritual part of believing and having faith and taking in the word that I'm telling you that can lead you to eternal life. So they were they were still having problems. And the, the funny thing is Jesus knew, as it says from the beginning, who they were and who did not believe. It wasn't like he didn't know this was going to happen. Jesus knows our heart. He knows man. He realized that even those that saw him, even those that he would give power to and gave power to, would still not believe. And you got to ask yourself, why? Why are you walking with him and talking with him and watching him do what he does and you don't believe? Then you got to ask us the same thing. We talk to him. We walk with him. In our minds, we call out to him. We see the creation through him and we don't believe. So we have to ask ourselves the same question. We don't get get to get off of the question because we weren't physically seeing him do the things because we physically look at everything that's been created through him. We physically eat everything that was spoken because of him. We breathe it in. We taste it. We touch it. We drink it. So we don't get off of that because we he ain't physically walking with us right now. But he knew who was going to not believe. <laughs> And he knew that in order for them to get to the Father, they had to submit themselves to him. And he still didn't change his message. <laughs> so he said, therefore, I've said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him by my father. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Jesus, first of all, told them, I'm not worried about your earthly material here. If you don't come at me by your spirit, you are not coming to me the right way. No money, no gold, no merchandise, no food, no none of that stuff. You have to seek me through your spirit. You had to come to be with him because you wanted to be with him, which meant you had to pick up a lot of ways that we don't have and didn't have. We had to learn his walk. We had to learn his true message. We had to know Jesus. We had to accept him into our lives. So, then they had to come to him and they had to come to Jesus and believe. But remember, they did not truly come to Jesus until it came to the sense of believing him and trusting him and loving him. Because as we were looking back in John 6, 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he believes in me shall never thirst. So we have to be hungry for the Lord. We have to want to follow him. We, we have to desire him and call upon him. So from that time on, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. 
So once Jesus put a bash on this earthly stuff and the, the wrong reasons for following them, like they thought they were going to get food or these other things, they were kind of discouraged because mm, they didn't they didn't know why they were going. And they were confused by this controversy that was going on because Remember, the religious leaders were acting up because they were quarreling. If you remember, we were in um, a couple of verses up when they were quarreling about them among themselves. And they were saying they were saying that crazy stuff. We read it yesterday. How can man give us his flesh to eat? They were quarreling. They didn't understand what he was saying. And then I remember. If you're quarreling about that and he's explaining it to you, you're not listening to him. You're still in the mindset of the physical. Woof. And from that time on, and I think from that time on, probably meant because of this situation, they stopped walking with him. They, they stopped going with them, and they left. And people may have thought, well, if they left, we all should leave. No, you shouldn't. Don't leave the Lord to follow Ben. Don't be an enemy against the Lord because of man. You stay firm in your belief. You stay firm in the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice. And remember that he died for you. Man is going to be man. We're going to do some things that we shouldn't do. And they shouldn't have left. They should have asked for more understanding if they didn't believe. They should have asked for faith if they didn't have enough faith. But even when they asked for faith, they should have asked for the right reason. I need understanding, Lord. Can you... Grant me understanding that I may understand and know and believe. But I've seen you. Why am I still having problems? A heart. And what Jesus was really telling them in this situation is, look, don't follow me for material and worldly things. That's not the gain of what I've come to do. And this was hard to them. The true gain of Christ was salvation and eternal life and the atonement for all sins. That you may have victory and glory with the Lord. So if you were coming for the food that I fed you, if you were coming to be wealthy, if you were coming just because of the sight things I did, don't come for that. Make sure your spirit is coming to receive me. So then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? Now these were the 12 chosen. Don't forget, these are the 12 chosen. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, which he does and did. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Okay, so Jesus asked the other ones who are tight. Remember, they had gone out. They were going out. And he asked them, do you want to go away? Do you want to follow me or do you want to follow the world? And Jesus wanted to know what was in their heart. And he knew. He wanted to know what their motives were for following him. Why are you following me? What are you seeking from me? Because I'm telling you right now, if it's the motives of this world, don't come. Don't show up to this party. It ain't that type. So, and it, it wasn't to discourage them. Again, this is not to discourage them from following Christ, it is actually to encourage them to follow him for the right reasons. 
because it ain't going to be a candy walk. It ain't going to be gifts and presents and everything that you may think. This is a serious walk. And when they said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter was speaking for all 12 of them. And if you look at this, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? This is a conversation of faith right here because he called Jesus Lord. He recognized that Jesus is Lord. He knew Jesus is Lord. And despite these difficulties, him knowing that Jesus is Lord, he said, to whom shall we go? Whom shall we go? And then he also recognizes what he has. You have the words of eternal life. He understood that this world, this manly material world, couldn't compare to the words of eternal life. He knew it. So he recognized Jesus as the Messiah. He recognized him and gave it to him in a faith statement. And then Jesus answered them. And this is, this is what I love about this. Jesus answered them. Did I not choose you? I chose you. The 12. And then he says, and one of you is a devil. I know it. <laughs> he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it had it was he who would betray him in being one of the twelve. Jesus did, in fact, choose the twelve disciples. He had more, but he chose those twelve. But he knew that one of those dudes was like a devil, and he was going to betray him, Judas Iscariot. He was going to do a bad thing and betray him. But he knew it ahead of schedule. He knew suffering was coming, and this was one of the leads into it. And when he spoke of Judas, he just told him Judas, and he didn't, he didn't tell him exactly who it was, then, but he said he knew Judas was that horrible person. And even if Judas betrayed and when he betrayed the Lord, it should not change your faith at all. A true walk with Christ is a true spiritual walk with Christ. And we have to submit. Whew. Judas was the one that betrayed them, and Jesus knew it, and he still shared with him. Jesus loves us even in our own faults, and we, we sometimes don't even recognize it until it's too late. And as you see and you read with Judas, Judas doesn't truly recognize how bad it was until it was too late. And he was told ahead of schedule. Amen.